Hello and welcome back to a brand new episode of my webinar. Um, we decided to move it to the IT Varsity channel as of uh, this week. Uh, and uh, there's some big changes coming up, but uh, the main thing is that we're gonna be still talking the same things. We're gonna be talking technology, we're gonna be talking entrepreneurship, we're gonna be talking about problems and how these problems are going to be solved. So you're welcome to join us into this, this world of discussion around tech and entrepreneurship and education and philosophy and um, everything that deals with solving today's problems, solving the world's problems. Mm -hmm. And one of the big problems that we're gonna be talking about, and by the way, this is Taha, we, you guys know him. One of the big problems we're gonna be talking about today is um, climate change, global warming, and the contribution of technology in that. So Tala is going to do the intro, and then we'll we're going to have a discussion. So talk to us. Right. So um, climate change. It's uh, I think regardless of your your standpoint where you stand on it, you probably have heard about it. It's been addressed on every single level, starting all the way at, at governments talking about it and businesses. It's uh, a, a problem that's affecting everyone on every on every single level basically climate change means that the climate today for us isn't the same as it was for example when you were our age when you were my age um i mean we've seen things like uh increased temperature and that has caused things like uh, more frequent storms more frequent heat waves droughts um i mean here in south africa especially in the in the kwazulu natal province I think a lot of people will have noticed it by now that things aren't exactly the way they used to be. And a lot of people attribute that towards global warming and, and, and climate change. So I want to get your, your input on, on this. Where do you put uh, the impact that humans are having on this? Uh, because again, it, it's it's a controversial topic. A lot of people say that it's it's just something that happens. Some people are say it's largely got to do with the fossil fuels. So where do you stand on that spectrum? So that's a good question. I mean, there are people that advocate this whole concept of climate change, and there are people who who are deniers. Uh, but I think we need to, out, at the outstand, we need to create a distinction between two completely different terms, right? One is uh, climate change and the other one is global warming, right? right? Now, these are two completely different things. As far as climate change goes, the climate of the planet has been changing for thousands of years, actually for around 12,800 years since the end of the, 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 the last ice ages, the, the climate has mm -hmm. been changing. That is a completely natural phenomenon. There's little we can do. There's no, there's nothing we can do about it. That's important to know. But global warming, on the other hand, is something that we as human beings are contributing towards. And that is undeniable. All right. the facts point to global warming taking place and human intervention in that. What, is, what people debate is generally the extent of it. How bad is it? How much of it is actually climate change? How much of it is global warming? I don't, I think that's where there's some debate that comes in and how much of the global warming um, we, we are actually responsible for. So that, that is the only, uh, you know, the only uh, point of discussion between, between scientists. But the main thing is that everyone realizes climate is changing, the globe is, is mm -hmm. warming so, ever so slightly. So basically, the, the what, what you're saying is, or the way you put it is, climate change is a natural, really long process that has been going on for, for, for thousands of years. Yeah. But global warming is a human, is, is, is the, the human effect that we are having on, on I guess, speeding up the, the process of, yeah. of climate change. Yeah. And I think, I think it's, a, it's a very unfortunate uh, use of, of terminology here. And I'll tell you why, right? It's because when we talk about global warming, yeah, there's, there's deniers. Yes, there's people that dispute it. Yes, there's controversy, controversy around it. But we don't need to look at 
the sky, we can look at the earth and look at the damage that we've done as human beings. That is undeniable. The pollution that we've caused on land, in the oceans. I mean, there's islands of plastic floating mm. around. Some of the most beautiful beaches that I used to visit as a kid, when you go to them now, there's plastic bottles, Coke bottles, right. and milk bottles strewn around. There's rivers that are polluted. I mean, there were reports of, uh, of the rivers near Durban that were totally polluted. So I don't think we should just look at the concept of global warming. I think we should look at pollution and man's damage to the environmental the effect we have on, on exactly right. and to biospheres and to creatures that we've made we've made extinct i think that's where our our focus should be exactly i mean i, I think that, that that's a, a perfect perfectly fair point global warming gets a lot of attention these days but uh, like for example you look at the, the great pacific garbage patch this i think it's about the size of texas the state of texas this island it's of huge. of trash of plastic waste just floating in the ocean and you know you, you look at that and you don't really need to debate the increase in temperature to know that this is a huge impact that human beings have had on on the planet and it's not a good one exactly so, and and those are not necessarily causing climate change or global warming but they are part of that bigger problem mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. is possibly leading to global warming. So we need to look at that. We need to look at uh, the air pollution. I mean, how clear were the skies during hard lockdowns? Uh, and how, how much of these emissions from factories and vehicles is affecting uh, people's health? How much of the water we're drinking, the food we're eating is polluted with contaminants that are making us sick, that are causing cancer? It's disastrous all sides right and i think th that has caused a lot of a lot of industries to to be placed under scrutiny but i think it's i mean as usual the especially in the media um the scrutiny has been very selective so obviously fossil fuels got uh, under a lot of scrutiny and that involved you know vehicles cars planes because of the emissions and then plastics and the fast food industry and single use plastics. But I think every industry needs to be examined because we are all having or must be having some form of impact. And there's, there must be something that every single industry, every single person can do to help with this, uh, with this problem. Um, so that brings us to our industry, the industry of technology. And, uh, you know, do you think that firstly, the tech industry has an impact on, on pollution and on global warming. Yeah, I mean, big time. You know, there was a time when you could separate tech industry from other industries, right? Tech was strictly computers. Right. Mm -hmm. Then it became computers and phones, right? Because before that, I mean, as a, there was a computer on your desk and there was a phone, you pick the phone dial and you would, you would dial somebody's number. Then it became computers and then phones and then computers and then cameras and then computers and then um, your, your, your television because your, your, your phone now became your computer, your, your TV, your camera, your internet browser, everything in one. So really when you think about the tech industry today, everything is so integrated. I mean, think about today's cars, look at your Teslas, mm. your electric vehicles that are coming out the technology in those is very similar to the technology in your cell phone. I'm talking about specifically the batteries, for example, when you take the batteries, lithium ion batteries, there are lithium ion batteries here. When you look at the dashboard of your Tesla, you look at the operating system, it's a computer. It's just exactly. a computer yeah. with some motors and some wheels on it. That's all these cars are. So we have to, we have to look at technology in the bigger scheme, the bigger picture, right? Now, how does technology contribute to pollution? How does it contribute to damage to the Earth's environment? A number of ways. Let's take the batteries, right? When we talk about lithium ion batteries, it requires, obviously, as the name suggests, lithium, cobalt, and I think it was uh, not copper, lithium, cobalt. Okay, let's talk lithium and cobalt. Now, to extract these minerals out of the ground, causes massive destruction 
uh, to to the groundwater. For example, the lithium, the lithium mm -hmm. comes from a place known as the lithium triangle in the in the in South America, and to get the lithium out, they have to pump tens of thousands of liters of water into the ground. It's kind of like is, fracking. Is, is that the, that, um, I mean, we've seen a lot of pictures on it on the internet, those giant open pit mines. No, no, this, this, is, this is not that type of, of, of mine. Oh, no, this is where the, it's a, it's a process like fracking where they pump the water in and then the, 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 the mud from underneath comes up and that's oh, okay. rich in, right. in lithium. Now, what that does is it, completely obliterates the groundwater. It doesn't just pollute it, it, it reduces it. Farms around the area are suffering, they're struggling to, to survive. Nickel, nickel is the other one. Now, the nickel actually comes from Indonesia. And what that's doing is, no one knows for sure why and how, but where the nickel mines are in Indonesia, for some reason, the ocean temperatures around there have gone up. And as a result, the fish have left. And those poor subsistence fishermen, fisher villages that are surviving on the fish are starving now because mm. the fish have all been driven away. So we are, I mean, in just in producing these batteries, it causes so much damage. Then right. when we get the devices in our hands, what do we need to do? We need to charge them. And the biggest contributor to global pollution greenhouse gases is energy production, whether it's through um, fossil fuels like oil or coal or whatever, but energy production, part of that is electricity, devices need electricity. We need that, we plug in, we're charging our devices, but we don't know downstream the, the damage that's causing. So yeah, definitely there's mm -hmm. a big impact that tech is making to uh, pollution. So that's very eye-opening for me because technology, uh, you know, especially things like iPhones and, and your laptop, it's viewed as a very clean technology. It's, uh, it, it uses very little energy. Um, but I, I think what, what a lot of people miss is the production and the fueling of, of that. So although you're using just electricity to, to charge your devices, to charge your electric vehicles, that, uh, and, and electricity can be produced cleanly but i think in the world today it's it, it isn't it, it, it isn't but also remember the end of life of these design of these gadgets also presents a problem right because what what happens when a cell phone gets too old we chuck it in the bin maybe that mm -hmm. thing goes into the dump now inside the cell phone all these poisonous toxic chemicals that are there they start to break down and go into the dump, from the dump into the soil, from the soil into the groundwater. And people down the line uh, are drinking that, maybe we ourselves are drinking that groundwater because it's being pumped into our taps and we drink it and suddenly everybody's getting sick. Why? There's mercury in that water or there's nickel in that water or there's some other toxic uh, chemical in there. So throughout the lifespan of these devices, they cause damage, which, which is not to say they are bad, which is not to say it mm. can't be a result. I mean, there are lots of ways that we can, we can solve this problem, but it just requires willpower, right? Yeah, so I mean, let, let's talk about that, right? So we know that technology, firstly, you can't really separate it from every other industry out there. It's so interwoven, but on its own as well, from production to sustaining, and then eventually disposing of te uh, technological devices, it has an impact on, on the environment. But technology is also, and even within iDiversity, marketed as a, a, a solution. As a, you know, you, you implement technology or you introduce technology to, to different problems to make those problems go away. So is, is it possible to do the same thing with, uh, with climate change and pollution in general? Can we use technology to, um, yeah, I mean, to fix the problem. Climate change, no way. There's nothing we can do, right? Like I said, it's a right. natural phenomenon. Uh, global warming, we're still not sure what is our contribution. But let's talk about pollution in general. Let's talk about responsibility to our our planet and responsibility mm -hmm. to our fellow human beings, like the poor farmers in in Jakarta or in uh, in DRC uh, here in Africa, in Central Africa where the, the cobalt comes from, 
there's been allegations that the mines use slave labor and child labor to, to extract that cobalt. And we are happily using these uh, chemicals in these phones of ours, not knowing the hardships that those people go through. So let's, let's, fo let's focus on that, on, on uh, extracting those minerals responsibly. We need to focus there first and foremost. And I think the problem is not the tech, it's the rampant greed, it's the rampant uncontrolled um, capitalism and greed that is causing all these problems. Mm -hmm. Because if the, if the owners of these mines were not so damn greedy, they would pay those right. people well. They would find ways to- And I mean, keep up with, with, with regulations. Exactly, keep up with regulations or put up regulations. Mm -hmm. Maybe there aren't regulations, put up regulations, do a study of the environment, do a study of or who are the people living around there? How can there be a two-way road? How can they benefit as well as us? But now it's all about leaching. It's leaching things away from the environment, leaching away from the people, from the locals, and taking all those trillions of dollars away back to the West, back to United States and making all the money there. So I think the problem starts there. This, the, the second part of the problem somewhat related you know it's like this spider's web it's like this disgusting spider's web of of greed right let me give you a good example how bad that is solar power was invented in the 1950s for those of you who are it varsity students it's important to know these kind of things it was invented in the 1950s in the 19 in 1954 i think the first photovoltaic cell was developed basically a solar cell that Thing that converts sunlight to electricity. 1954, we had almost three quarters of a century hmm. to implement and perfect that technology, yet we didn't. And only in the last few years that became in vogue because of all the noise in the media. Why? Why, why ignore free electricity from the sun? Yeah, I mean, I mean that, that's, that's a, a shock to me because it's always uh, seen as a, a new technology, a new generation of, of clean energy. But, but what you're telling me is my grandfather, I mean, at 1950, that was way before you were born even. It was, I mean, Your grandfather was born in the 1960s. <laughs> so my, my, my great grandfather could have had clean solar energy powering his home, but it's... Exactly, that's what I'm saying. I know the technology is not perfect. I know it's, it's inefficient. I know there are problems with production, but we, come on, we had 75 years to work on this technology, but what did we opt for? Fossil fuels. You know why? You know why? All of you know why? It's because fortunes are made on oil dollars. Trillions right. are made on oil dollars. Nobody really makes money out of free energy from the sun. Why give the poor free energy from the sun when we can make trillions out of coal and oil. See, so human greed. The, the, the whole global warming issue, the pollution, the pollution issue, from, from what you said is that it, it has a very, very deep roots in, in ethics and, and morality. Exactly. It's, it's that level of, of no ethics, no mm -hmm. morality, no care for the next person, that caused problem after problem after problem in society, and it's still going to continue. So it's not the tech. It's not the, uh, the, the, the fact that there are fossil fuels. That's there, it's always going to be there. It's what drives certain technologies and not others. I mean, electric vehicles, mm -hmm. something new and novel, right? Tesla and all that. All right, all right. Did you know electric vehicles were around before fuel-powered vehicles? In, I'm talking 1870, first electric vehicles in the late 1980s. They've been around before gas, before petrol-powered vehicles. But wow. what happened? Why I mean, did Elon I mean, Musk suddenly invent electric cars? He didn't. They've been around since his great, great, great grandfather was was around. The reason again is because people just didn't see the need for electric vehicles and they went with, uh, stupidly went with fuel powered vehicles. If, had they gone 
with electric vehicles. Look at how much of progress gas-powered vehicles made mm -hmm. over the past, what, 125 years, maybe right. 150 years. If we adopted electric then, and in the 1950s, we adopted solar power, oh, we could have had cars that- Exactly. That, I mean, that, the, that, the previous 100, 120 years brought us every single technological advancement we have today. I mean, the world we live in today didn't exist in the, in the 1700s and in the 1800s. It was invented over the past 120 years. So if we had invested resources into the clean energy, into sustainable living, uh, into ethical living and ethical business back then, who knows what kind of advancements we could have we could have made over the past the trouble years. is the trouble is it doesn't suit the capitalist mindset it doesn't suit the money making mindset i mean why again you know have free energy from the sun when you can make people pay for petrol and put the petrol prices so high mm -hmm. no one can understand why i mean there is plenty of petrol but what they'll do is they'll cut supply so that prices go up. Supply and demand. Really. Supply and demand. They create more demand. And who suffers ultimately? Not the rich, but the poor. The poor suffer because some dude in, in, in Wall Street feels that petrol prices should go up or the dollar should go up or the rand should be weak or the Turkish lira should be weak. And so that's what mm -hmm. happens. No consideration for what happens down the line. Let me, let me give you uh, another example, right? Another example popped in my head. When we look at these devices, we look at uh, our cell phones, computers, tablets, what stops uh, companies from making devices that can last 20 years, that can just keep upgrading? Maybe you just change one or two uh, little components inside, but you're using the device. I, I guess it would just affect their profits for next year because they won't be able to sell the replacements for exactly. the device. I mean, Apple was caught out. Wasn't Apple caught out they were. slowing yeah. down old phones? I think they were, they were sued by a few countries for, for that as well because... Yeah, yeah but I were. mean, uh, they must have got away just, you know, I mean, you, you charge the Apple, you, you give them a, 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 a fine of a billion dollars What's it to them? They are a two or three trillion dollar company. It means nothing. So, I mean, as much as I'm an admirer of Apple as a, uh, for their products, but as a company, they, they just do dirty tricks. Look at VW, the dirty tricks they mm. did. They actually cheated on the reporting of the car's emissions and that cheating went deep. They used technology to, to cheat. So unfortunately, we we are caught up in in this sort of you know mm. greed cycle and that's right. what we are facing now so yeah i mean okay so something that you've talked a lot about in the past also and is um the rate of technology advancements over the next few years is gonna skyrocket it's gonna make the next the, the, the previous hundred years which brought us everything we have today look like nothing and that's going to be largely due to you know artificial intelligence so how what direction do you think we should go in in the future i mean if we are going to be making all of this advancement i think us as individuals as people have the opportunity to steer that so how should we take it into the forward to make sure that number one the climate is looked after but also a higher level of ethics and and moral are observed so I think, I think that's a brilliant question. That's a brilliant question and it's for you guys, especially mm. those of you who are young, aspiring African techpreneurs, African um, uh, professionals. What we need to do in this country, South Africa, and in this continent is to say to the rest of the world, I beg your pardon, you did it your way, mm. right? Modern, liberal democracy slash capitalism, they are tied together, they are sisters, right? You can't separate one from the other. They Siamese twin democracy right. and well, liberal Western democracy and capitalism. You did it your way. You messed up everything. You messed up the environment. 
You exploited human beings. You exploited the poor in South America. You, you exploited the East and West, and you are trying to exploit Africa now. Uh, would you please step away, firstly, and let us handle this. Let us show you how we can do business sustainably, responsibly, innovatively using technology, mm -hmm. right? Africa could become, could easily become, South Africa could easily become the world's leader in, uh, in solar power. I mean, we've got deserts, we've got the Karoo and the Kalahari mm -hmm. deserts. Uh, I mean, I did a calculation a few years ago on how much of the Kalahari needs to be covered uh, to produce electricity for the whole country and even our neighboring countries. And it was like a very small fraction, I forgot the exact number of this desert. Now imagine if we, you get together, put your minds together, young, brilliant entrepreneurs, and rather than importing those solar panels, start designing completely new ones South mm. African made by South African inventors and then develop businesses around that, put them out into the deserts and then provide energy. I know they are, the government is, is being a bit of a, uh, a sort of a roadblock on these kinds of things, but it's gonna, it's gonna open up just now. There's too much pressure on the government right now. Now imagine if we do that. There was mm. a, um, and we have to be careful that these, technologies don't get snapped up and stolen because exactly I, yeah I, I mean we've seen that happen so many times too many times <laughs> too many times i mean i i remember a couple of decades ago somebody came up a south african inventor invented a wind up radio imagine a wind up radio now the the radios in the old days you guys don't know about this man we used to, used to have these radios and they used to have these batteries they used to call it the pm9 batteries these were notoriously expensive, but people didn't have electricity at home. They didn't, they, even if there was such a thing as rechargeable batteries, they didn't have the technology to charge those batteries. So they had to buy those batteries, put them in there, and those things last like three, four days, and then the batteries are flat, and then you have to chuck them and buy, buy new ones. But this person invented the wind-up radio. Imagine the transformation that would have caused the money it would have saved the poor. But what happened? That technology was patented, sent away to Europe. We never saw it again. All right. Now you tell me. So I mean, I think I think that's <laughs> that's a fair assessment. I mean, it's that that's I mean, and even in the digital space, we find you a, a small little startup company develops a tech solution that can help so many people, and then you get the likes of an Adobe or Microsoft or an Apple that swoops in, buys it, and then it either disappears or emerges a few years later as uh, a shadow of what it was intended to be, as just a, another product offering. Absolutely. And this is where you guys, you guys, you and yeah. them need to be firm. African techpreneurs, be firm, invent and keep it home. Homegrown, homebred businesses, homegrown innovations, tech innovations, homegrown solutions to our own problems, mm. keep them in. Because I think, I mean, we, we can never count on, on corporations like that to stop prioritizing profits over even something as uh, basic as, as human rights. And governments are generally slower to act, so. Exactly, I mean, you look at Western governments, look at the pinnacle of democracy in the United States. It's not run by the government, it's run by the corporations. Let's all be realistic about mm -hmm. it. Do we want that to happen in Africa? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Africa must be run by its people. And that right. must always remain. If we do, if we achieve that, this will be the greatest continent. Leave, leave aside Africans emigrating to, to Europe, which has become a problem for people at, in these days. People from all over the world will want to come and live in Africa because of the peace and right. the, the equality and the fairness that is happening so here and the it, tech yeah. advancements. So, I mean, your advice is number one, young Africans need to spearhead these efforts going forward. But I think just as importantly, they got not sell, don't mm. sell out. Don't sell so, out. <laughs> <laughs> Should we take a look if you have any, any questions? Okay.
Yeah, so uh, I am Rambo says, imagine all the shops said, bring your own plastic bag. Well, a lot of them do, uh, um, I am Rambo. I like your name, it's such a, <laughs> such a good name. So a lot of them do, but I think we need to be responsible uh, enough that when we are going to the shop, take one of those canvas bags and, and go rather than buying a, uh, a plastic bag because those are some of the biggest problems in the oceans. You know, turtles see that and they think yummy jellyfish, meantime, yuck, plastic bag. So definitely uh, a, good, a good point there. Mm -hmm. All right, I don't see any more questions. We've gone over time. Guys, uh, thanks for joining us today. I see there's quite a big number of you uh, joining us. I appreciate that. And um, I, I hope you enjoyed today's episode. I hope you enjoyed having uh, Mr. Talha around. I, also. I personally enjoyed this episode <laughs> a lot. I, I learned a lot today. Yeah, me so. too. I always learn. You know, in my research for these, uh, these episodes, I do, I do learn a lot, uh, a lot. Anyways, we'll see you guys next week. Bye-bye.